is not often someone in the top 10. It's steamrolled in 22 moves. But Hikaru Nakamura is not the average Undertaker, and he absolutely destroyed this top 10 player. This game shows us a beautiful attack out of a very aggressive opening and some great middle game tactics that set the stage for the final Coupe de Gras. We're going to see Hikaru's game against Shakiryar Mamediarov, who at the time was the 10th highest rated player in the world. This game was played in 2013. Let's jump right in. In this position, White starts with the move pawn to d4, pawn d5, and after c4, c6, knight c3, we see the accepted version of the Slav defense gambit. So typically, we see the queen's gambit decline with pawn to e6, and then potentially a capturing here on c4. But when you play with the move pawn to c6, you get a Slav. And this is a very aggressive Slav variation, and it's very dangerous. Because the main point is that white doesn't get his pawn back right away. Black plays pawn to b5, and this is a this is kind of dangerous. The c4 pawn is defended by a pawn, which is defended by a pawn that's very safe, and it's um, putting the question to white, how are you going to use your time advantage that you got from me pushing my pawns for the first four moves of the game? Uh, and in fact, he pushes uh, the pawn for the fifth move as well. How are you going to take advantage of my pawns in this position? And Shakiriar uh, plays knight on c to e2, the knight to f6, knight to f3. This is all standard theory, but after bishop to a6, just again kind of pointing out to white that this pawn on c4 is not going to be taken so quickly, uh, white plays knight g3, and we play c5. Now, this is already a very rare position. At this point, there had only been one other game that had been played in the database at the time that this game was played. And uh, Shakiriar plays a, uh, I guess you could call this a novelty. He plays the move bishop to d2. And this is not a very good move. And pretty much when you're playing an aggressive opening like this, you have to take it to your opponent. You have to be able to break down your opponent's central control and you have to expose their weaknesses. Anything less and you're going to have a, a big problem on your hands later in the game. At this moment, the best move would have been knight to e5, continuing to chip away at the pawn structure. And if you had tried c takes d4, we simply are happy to trade queens, and this position is not bad at all for white. He's going to be winning back this pawn, and the game will be fairly even. But bishop to d2 is too slow. All the way back here on move 9, bishop to d2, and now Nakamura plays extremely precisely to keep his advantage. This is not an easy position. I mean, sure, black's up a pawn, but I mean, this one looks like it's going to go at some point soon. I mean, you've got rook c1 coming in, queen c2, knight to e5. Uh, this pawn is under pressure, uh, which means if that pawn ever goes, the b pawn is under pressure. It's not easy to play. But Hikaru is very comfortable in these sort of dynamic structures, and he plays the best move. He plays the move pawn to e6, developing his pieces, ensuring that he's going to be able to get his attack going before it's too late. Remember, he's been pushing a lot of pawns. He's got to get his pieces developed. So after rook to c1, we see queen d5, and after knight e5, we see pawn takes d4. This is very important because the pawns are, again, so brittle that you're going to have to play precisely here. For instance, if you had just played a quiet move like bishop to e7, then again, a little relieving queen trade here with queen f3 would have pretty much caused uh, caused white no more problems. So for instance, if you castle, then just bishop takes c4, and uh, the material is even, potentially black is overextended here on the queen side, and potentially like the c pawn or the b pawn could become targets later on in the game. So it requires a bit of precision, and that precision was the move c takes d4, trying to exchange off the pawns before they fall by themselves. So Shaq played knight takes c4, and we see knight d7. 
again, as a very aggressive player, if you want to try and emulate Nakamura's play, you don't need to be greedy. Now here, Hikaru has been trying to hold on to his pawn, but he's not wanting more. He's not he's not going to try and play something like d takes e3, which would have been a fine move, by the way. But this is just starting to allow a little bit of trades, and it's allowing some weaknesses to be exposed. So the deal now would be, let's just say your only move is queen to b7, queen to d7, for instance, uh, and and you can trap the rook here in the corner. The knight moves, you lose your bishop. So this is this is very dangerous. You would have to play queen to b7 here, and then just trade pieces uh, with bishop takes a6, knight takes a6, and then after mm, you could castle here. I think um, just trading pieces is even better with this very weak pawn. Uh, something like knight h5, and if you trade, then white's got, uh, for instance, queen b5 coming in. If you play like bishop b7 here, then we're going to play maybe maybe just castles, castles. And I know this is kind of harder for me to explain, and it's kind of hard for you to understand Black's just down a black's just up a pawn here, but white's pieces are much better, and that's kind of what you just have to accept in this sort of position. Well, white's queen is very aggressive, the bishop is aiming towards the king side, the knight can come over very quickly. You've got a rook on the open file and another rook coming soon. Black, on the other hand, has almost no good activity. The knight's on the edge, the rooks are behind pawns, the queen's in the corner. And the b-pawn is a long-term target. Play pawn to b3. And the issue is that that white just has pressure. And that's going to be enough to keep the game in balance. Now, that would have been an option. But instead, Hikaru continues to be very aggressive and very precise. And plays, again, the best move with knight bd7. Uh, Shaq plays bishop to e2, rook c8, and bishop to f3. Of course, rook c8 is in direct response to bishop f3 threatening to win the rook in the corner. Rook c8, bishop to f3. There's no time to grab the pony. You're going to be losing your queen. So queen played to c5, which is a move I would never recommend for you guys to play uh, in, in normal gameplay. I mean, it's forced. But you're putting your, your queen on a potential discovered line against their rook. And while this is forced in this exact position, he already knows what he's doing. If you're playing into these sort of positions, you've got to be very cognizant of all of the tactics in the position. So you have to constantly be afraid of every single knight discovery in every single position you calculate until the rook or the queen moves. That's what it means to be precise. You have to calculate all of that. And that's a lot of work and it's very easy to go wrong. So that's why, uh, that's why I would not really do this. There are no useful discoveries though. So Shakiri R plays pawn to b3 and after bishop to e7, knight to e2, trying to collect this d4 pawn. Again, Nakamura has not really been uh, too interested in taking here, opening up the bishop and the queen. So we see knight e2 trying to force Nakamura to move and he just sacrifices the pawn with pawn to d3. Again, like your other option would be to take here on e3, but now just the white pieces are too strong. This is an even worse variation than before because you have to worry about these discoveries and white's pieces are just so much better placed now. For instance, bishop to f4 hitting the queen, if you, that would drive your queen all the way back. If you play something like e5, it's already game over. Knight takes e5 is a discovery and you lose your pawn. You're also in a lot of trouble down here. Uh, potentially with the bishop c6 coming. So uh, you would have to play queen to d8. Then the knight comes into d6. Bishop takes on d6. And then let's just say queen takes d6 here. And you are unable to castle. You're under a tremendous pressure. This pawn is potentially about to fall. Black's game is on the brink of destruction. So... With that being said, Hikaru, again, finds the best move, pawn to d3. So we often think about aggressive and attacking players as somebody who's just 100% focused on how to get at the other guy's king. 
I think one of the big lessons that I took from this game is how important it also is when you're attacking to think about slowing your opponent down, whether that be in his counterattack or in this case, mobilizing his defensive units. You, you could say that this allows a counterattack, but you could also say at the very least, this allows white to get his defensive units in the game and all of a sudden your queen is starting to get cut off and it's very hard for you to create an attack. So that's kind of the way I take this game. Don't allow your opponent's pieces to get too active if you want to have a good attack. In fact, that's why if you watch some of my recent videos on my channel, all of the attacks that have come that I've shown you have been with closed centers. It's so much easier when the pieces are locked out. So pawn to d3, and of course knight to f4, trying to collect that d3 pawn. Black castles here. And we see knight takes d3, hitting the queen, and queen f5. Again, white is just so tied up here. None of his pieces can really move. This is a very difficult position to play, and white makes a big mistake. Of course, the threat here is queen takes d3. Never forget to ask what your opponent's attacking. He played the move e4. But this leads to a beautiful tactical idea. Instead, the best move would have been knight takes b4, but this is very hard to see. Yes, it's a pawn. It's a free pawn. But it comes with baggage. After bishop takes c4, if rook takes c4 here, knight e5, and the only move is knight c6. It's very hard to spot. Look at the look at the bar here on the left side of your screen. It's hovering around here. If you play something like the second best move on, on the board, rook to f4, look at this. This just looks like a natural move. You're developing your rook. You're attacking the queen or moving your rook to safety and attacking the queen. But this is just losing. Queen g6, castles. This looks okay for white. What's the stinging blow? Well, white's pieces are just too bad, too cramped. A5. Now the knight's in trouble. Can't go to c6. Can't go to d5. Can't go to d3. And can't go to c2 because of the queen and the rook. So you'd have to drop your knight back all the way to a2 if you wanted to try to keep this position alive. But now we see knight takes f3 and you have to go with rook takes f3 because queen takes f3 is going to run into a fork of the bishop and the knight. So you have to play rook takes f3 very uncomfortably, but rook c2 comes anyway. And now the knight is again under pressure and like maybe the best move is just to give up the knight but if you really are trying to play greedy materialistically you're going to play a move like knight to c3 and after rook to d8 uh oh spaghetti oh you're going to lose your bishop oh wait you think you can hold on to it for one more turn well you're going to lose it on the next turn so yeah you're going to be losing a lot of material here and you're you're going to um not recover from that so we see we see uh Shakiri are avoiding this line. It's just very difficult to play. Again, you have to find that move in this position. You have to find knight c6, trying to trade off some of those pieces. Again, another theme when you're getting attacked, try and trade pieces, alleviate the pressure. Uh, but instead, after queen f5, he goes pawn to e4. And uh, this does also have the benefit, admittedly, of trying to open up the bishop. It does look good on paper. But after knight takes e4 and Pawn g4, which, again, is, is actually a really good move. Shakiri R is maybe a little misled in this position, but it's it's um, he's still playing at a very high level. There's a reason why he was absolutely on fire this year. In 2013, he had a really good year. And pawn to g4 is just one of those high-level moves. It, like, if you just castle here, just to show you, you know, the computer is showing a big advantage for black. Well, that's because if you just play a normal move like castles, it's already GG's. It's game over. Knight takes d2, queen takes d2, bishop to g5, and you're losing material. Oh wait, knight e3 you say? Not so fast. You lose the knight on d3. So this is losing, and you have to walk on a tightrope just to avoid you know, falling into the canyon. And after pawn to g4, queen d5, again, there's just no relief. Black is playing precisely here. Hikaru is not allowing any sort of, any sort of, discovery or pin issues here because the point is after the move queen e2 his plan was to defend the knight permanently with pawn to f5 a very aggressive move utilizing his four on three majority of pawns d3 
eventually try and make some sort of pass pawn happen later in the game. But this, of course, also just defends the knight, keeps the knight strongly placed in the center. And after the move castles, whoops, after the move castles, we see, let me get rid of this, we see a beautiful, uh, very aggressive, maybe not the best move, but a very great, simple idea that Hikaru has to win this game. Um, if you try to start to simplify and maybe play bishop takes knight, then all of a sudden these discoveries do become a problem. And again, like you're, we talked about rooks lined up with queens. Sometimes queens diagonally lined up with rooks can be big problems. For instance, if you play knight to f4 here, which I think is the only move, for instance, you do something like knight to b2 and just the move pawn to e3 is uh, a discovery. So you'd have to try to avoid that with knight to f4, counter attacking the queen, but just the super quiet move, queen to b7, and now pawn to e3 is coming yet again. Something like bishop to e3 to prevent that pawn from, from moving, and now your game just completely falls apart. The, uh, the knight cannot take on e5 because of rook takes c1 and the bishop takes c2. Uh, yeah, it's just it's it's just really bad. Your position is in huge trouble, and now the threat is rook takes f4, bishop takes f4, and drop the knight in to win the game. So, uh, you know, it's 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 a hard position to understand, but the way I like to think about this, and the way I'm going to avoid positions like this as white in the future, are to make sure one that I get my king safe early in the game. This absolutely did not happen but two and more importantly get your pieces developed quickly because against a good player they won't let you come back this game ended very quickly after castles we finally see the move the sacrifice of the rook in the description above you've been waiting for this rook takes c4 and this is absolutely a beautiful idea now it's not the best move in the game you could have kept the tension and continued to play well with, like, say, knight dc5, just trying to attack these pieces and, you know, maybe open up open up the bishop towards the queen a little bit more. Uh, that would have been that would have been great, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with bishop takes. Rook takes knight. Uh, and here, Shaq resigned the game. He foresaw, at the very least, he's losing two pieces for a rook, which against a strong player is uh, GG's, is good knight. And um, if you try to be greedy, if you go pawn takes on c4, which is the best move, just bishop takes c4, and now the knight is going to fall. So um, uh, your best here is probably something like knight takes b4, just trying to trade pieces. But we're not gonna uh, we're not gonna allow too much after this. This we're just going to play e takes d5, and then we're gonna take this bishop on d2, and we have two knights for the rook. Maybe this was resigning a little bit early, but Shakiri already understood that his opponent was a very strong player on fire in this particular game, and he knew that two pieces are absolutely going to be one. Just to show you how to win a position like this, imagine if this knight were to ever uh, move to, say, c5, and then let's put this pawn on a a5, and let's just ignore these bishops for now. And let's again just focus on the two pieces versus one, so the rook versus the knight. If this knight gets to c5, and this knight gets to, say, c3, and this rook is defending the a pawn, there's literally nothing that that one rook can do against this pawn. So obviously you can't do this right away. But at some point, the two is always going to beat the one. The two is going to gang up on one pawn and take it, and then go to the next pawn and take that, and so on. And eventually, the two pieces will also help to promote their pawn. And this is this is just completely winning for Nakamura. So a great game, beautiful attack, keeping his pieces, his opponent's pieces off balance and staying very aggressive, playing precisely in difficult positions is why Hikaru Nakamura is one of the most exciting players to watch. And this is why this particular game is one of his best of all time. Hope you all guys enjoyed this and I will see you in the next one. Bye.